Now let's talk about commutators and how these are related to the concept of uncertainties in measurements. The commutator of two operators, a hat and b hat, okay, is represented by this symbol right here. So you separate a and b by a comma, put them in square brackets. So that's called the commutator of properties, uh, operators a and b. That's uh, that's another operator, and the outcome of that operator is the difference in applying A first and then B compared to the situation where you apply B first and then A. Okay? So if I were to say A hat, B hat operating on function F, then you're going to say, okay, I'm going to do B first on, operator A, on function F and then apply operator A. And I'm going to switch the order. I'm going to do A first, apply it on, oper on function F, and then do operator B on the result. So that's what uh, commutator means. So the commutator is just another operator. It's the sum of th these two products. It's the difference of these two product operators. So what's the commutator of X and PX? You should be able to show that that is equal to IH bar. And let's see if we can do that. commutator of x and px. Okay. So and let's apply that on a function of x. What does what are we supposed to do? We do x px first and then subtract px x, right? So apply that on f, apply that on x. Right? So what do we get? What does P, what's the Px operator? H, so this is x hat times x hat operating on and Px operating on f. What does that do? H bar over i d by dx, right? Derivative with respect to x of function f. Okay? Minus. What does this do? It's just a multiplicative operator, right? So Px hat. So I just multiply f by x. Okay. Next step. What does the multiplicative operator do? Just multiply. So this is just going to be equal to x times h bar over i times the derivative of f with respect to x. Let me put f, let me keep putting f in blue here. Ah. h bar over i d by dx of function f. Okay. Uh, minus, what does the momentum operator do? Takes the derivative with respect to x and then multiply the result by h bar over i, right? So I'm going to take the derivative of x times f. What's the derivative of a product? First times the second plus the second times... Uh, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So let me rewrite this. So this is h bar over i. I'm going to say x times df dx. Right? minus h bar over i and this is going to be x times derivative of f with respect to x so that's first first times the derivative of the second plus the second which is f right times times the derivative of the first, which is dx dx. Okay, and so let's do some simplification. That's one. Okay. And what do we have now? So this is equal to h bar over i x times df dx minus h bar over i. So I'm going to distribute this, right? times 
x dx dx plus negative h bar over i times f. Well, what do we what do we see here? This and this are the same, but there's a minus sign. So what do we have left? Which is equal to negative h bar over i times f. So that is the result we say of applying the commutator of x hat and p x hat on function f. Right? All it does, this particular commutator, all it does is it multiplies the function f by negative h bar over i. Okay? So we say, but what is negative h bar over i? What's another way of writing that? It's just i h bar, right? Right? So times f. So all this commutator does is it multiplies the function by i h bar. So you could say that this commutator is a multiplicative operator. It multiplies it by i h bar. So right there. Okay. H bar, remember, is h over 2 pi. I can't type h bar on the computer, so that's why I have to keep writing h over 2 pi. All right. So that's a commutator. So that's how you derive a commutator. You just apply it, and then when you get to the end, some you have an operator. You end up with an operator on a function. So whatever that operator is, that is what that's the definition of your commutator. All right. So what's the significance of commutators? If a operators a and b happen to commute, okay, then we say that the commutator of a b is just a null operator. It just multiplies the operator by zero, because if a b f, if a b f and b a f are the same regardless of what the function is, okay, this f right here must be an arbitrary function. It cannot be any specific function. It doesn't have, shouldn't be just one specific function. It should apply to any function, okay? If this happens to be zero, we say that the commutator is a null operator, then we say that those two operators commute. Well, if that is the case, you can prove that it's possible to precisely determine A and B simultaneously, okay? And the reason for that is we can prove that two op if two operators commute, then you can find a common complete set of eigenfunctions for them. So you can find a set of eigenfunctions that would be eigenfunctions of A, and there also happen to be eigenfunctions of B. Okay, if that's the case, remember if psi is an eigenfunction of A, then measuring A will give you a definite value. If psi also happens to be an eigenfunction of B, then measuring B will give you a definite value. So if you can find a common complete set of eigenfunctions of A and B, then it's possible to measure A and B simultaneously very precisely. Okay? Get an exact value for A and B. So that's the significance of commutators. So since x and px are not, do not commute, right? Then we say it's not possible to simultaneously determine x and px precisely, which is our uncertainty principle. Okay. So that leads us to our last, our postulate five. Is it time to go? Okay, so postulate five, we're going to cover that next time. We're going to talk about the uncertainty principle expressed in terms of commutators.